Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Give me a second, please. To the left is the King James Version, to the right is the Expanded Bible. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his or her body according to that he or she hath done, whether it be good or bad. So why do I teach the way that I teach? all of these videos that I make, what am I doing? Listen, when you die, after you die, I don't know at what point after you die, but you have to appear before Jesus Christ. Imagine you lived a very selfish life. You was really rude, mean, lukewarm. You know, you know things of God, but you chose, hey, let me do me. Let me do sins and whatever. What if you stand before Jesus Christ being that way? Imagine the fear. You are standing before God the Father's Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, part of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You standing before a being that has no beginning or end. And he took part in making you and you are standing before him as a disobedient servant. Imagine how you would feel. Look, this is the reason why I teach the way to be so you can get into heaven if you choose to follow it. I am not saying that I know all about the Bible because there are some areas that I can't teach about because my comprehension, well, I don't comprehend certain areas of the Bible. This is one of many reasons why I tell you all. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is one of the reasons why I tell you all that this life is not really life, if you understand what I am trying to say. This life is a test, but people are trying to live this life as life, when you should be living this existence as a test. Why? For we all, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So if we are going to be judged based upon how we live, that means that this life is a test. So that means that we are going to be graded. Yes, we are going to be graded based upon how we live in this life. So that is telling you this life is a test. Hey, here goes the book here, and I am going to grade you based upon if you follow this book or not. That is pretty much how this life is. With some test, what do you have to do first? You have to study the material in a book. <laughs> Isn't it the same for us now? We have a book. We have to study the book. We study and live based upon what the Bible is telling us. 
then when we die, we get our final grade. Why? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So we are going to be graded based upon how we live our life. So stop living this life as your final life. Your final life is going to be either in heaven or the lake of fire. And I really get somewhat irritated when I hear people say, hey, I will try my best. What if someone told you, hey, if you go in that pond or in that water area, some alligators are going to eat you. Well, I will try my best not to go into that pond. No, what you are going to do is avoid that pond, right? Or that water area. Like if someone told you that alligators are going to eat you up, if you go into that pond, you are not going to go by it. You are going to do what you have to do to not get into that pond. But when a person tells you how to live your life based upon the Bible, well, I will try my best. My Lord. The reason why many people are saying that, because if God was to show you hell, and I believe I gave a few testimonies about certain aspects of hell. Now, I have not seen the entirety of hell. I have seen certain things, and I believe I gave a testimony on certain demons I saw too. Not in the hell, but in my personal walk with God. If God was to open your spiritual eyes and show you hell or he doesn't even have to show you hell but what if he was to show you demons man like every day you will see a demon every day for two hours would you say that hey i will try to do what is right by god no you are going to do it why because you can see it my Lord, my understanding about God did not increase until I started to read my Bible more and pray more. So even when I began to serve God, I did not understand as much as I understand now, but I believed what was written in the Bible, even if I could not fully comprehend it. And as I get closer to God, the questions that I did have are being answered to a certain extent. Oh, my Lord. That just really irritate me. I will try my best and be so careless about it when you say it oh, my lord so listen man we all have to appear before jesus christ when i appear before jesus christ i don't want him to be mad at me i don't want him to have a frown I want him to have a big smile on his face, have his arms open toward me, welcome me into heaven, and tell me how good of a job I did, so on and so on. I want that. I don't want him to tell me, depart from me. I don't want him to tell me that I was a bad sinner and all of this other crazy stuff. No. I want God to be proud of me. This is the reason why I am living my life the way that I am now. Because I am trying so hard to please God. All that I do is for him, pretty much. Because I would not be teaching or doing 
most of the things that I am doing now for people if it was not for Jesus by far. Why? Because I know that I have to appear before him. I don't want my works to be in vain. That's why I am sacrificing so much in this life so I can please God. Dude, there are many things that I would like to do in this life. Actually, I take that back. <laughs> the more understanding I get about sin and demons and stuff like that, I find out that the sins that I once did was not as fun as I thought it was. I could have died so many times. But I am sacrificing and have sacrificed much to live for God. And once you do that, you are going to find that the sins that you enjoyed doing, it's not really as fun as you once thought. I'm telling you. Look. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, telling you that we are going to be graded. But you are living your life as if no one is going to grade you and you are not going to get in trouble for disobeying the Bible. Look, we don't know when we are going to die. A person may be able to say, hey, I am going to live until, until I am 60 or 50. No, there are people who are dying in their teen, teenage years, in their 20s, 30s, 40s, so on and so on. You don't know when you are going to die. I don't know. So we must be ready to leave this earth at all times. So repent of your sins. God, please forgive me of all my sins. Repent even if you believe that you have done nothing wrong. I know that there are some prideful people out there that believe that they don't have to repent, which is insane. Read your Bible more. Pray more. Go on a fast without eating or drinking anything for a certain time period. Fasting is necessary. Look, <laughs> let me highlight it, man. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is a guarantee. That should really open your eyes right there. I know that some churches don't teach this, but this is some serious stuff here, man. Imagine standing before Jesus Christ knowing that you are not right with him. And he holds the power to do whatever he wants with you. Uh, this is my life, Kevin, and I can do whatever I want to. What is that? YOLO. You only live once or something like that. That is crazy talk. No, once your earthly suit dies, your spirit is going to come out. Your spirit does not die. Your body dies, this flesh dies, but your spirit never dies. So, you never die. The real you is not this earth suit. It is your spirit. So, you don't die. You are going to transition from this world to the next world, heaven or hell. So you only live once, motto, wherever, whatever that is, that is a lie. You only live once. I believe that is true because 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> you only live once. Yes, that is true because you are not going to die per se. This body is going to die, but your spirit is not going to die. So yes, YOLO is right because you will only live once. <laughs> so I pray that this makes sense. God bless.